I've been working on this pitcher. I think it's ready to come out. I noticed the handle sticking out and it's really picking around it. Wow, look at that. I'm in Yankton, South Dakota, standing in front of one of the oldest houses in town. It was owned by the Wynn family and was built in 1873. I got permission to excavate the backyard in search of artifacts, so I'll take a walk around and see what's going on. And this is a truly amazing house. When it was built, it was no doubt one of the bigger houses in the Dakotas. The main part appears to be all original. It's got the wide pitch of the roof line and those designs above the windows. Looks like there's a couple additions added. The final one back there was built sometime after 1890 and I believe was used as a summer kitchen. The whole thing is built out of those soft bricks though that a lot of the earlier houses in Yankton were made from. Here's the backyard where this gravel lot is. There was a big garage. I had it torn out a couple weeks ago and at the end of this sidewalk I hit some anomalies with a probe rod. There was a loss of compaction and some objects down there. There is part of a cement slab on top of it so we'll have to chop that out first. As you can see, this pit is loaded. I don't even know where to start. This one looks interesting. Looks like some kind of a toiletry bottle. Maybe a perfume of some sort. It's got a tooled top. I'd say it's at least 120 years old. Oh, this thing with the bale stopper. Looks like some kind of blob top. Let's see what we got here. Wow. A citrate of magnesia. Look at that. It's got the stopper still intact, some kind of porcelain stopper. This one's also a tooled top. Some kind of prescription bottle made by the Western Bottle Manufacturing Company, circa 1900. Looks like a tooled crown top beer bottle. You know what? That's early machine made, actually. I put this at about 1910. Looks like some kind of wine bottle. That's oh, a nice color. It's got a tooled top. These are usually green. It's cool to see one in aqua. Another little tooled crown top beer bottle. Hmm. No embossing. Three more. Looks like possibly a prescription bottle. Yep. Oh, you know what? Nox it. I've never heard of one of these. I wonder if it was some sort of patent medicine. It's a tooled top. going on here? Uh, oh wow, uh, Val Blatz, uh, Tool Crown Top Beer. I believe Blatz was from Milwaukee. This one dates back to about 1905. A little wine bottle. Uh, looks like a applied top. An applied top turn mold. Again, it's a lighter color. These are usually olive. Oh, an 
a little uh, Bakelite toothbrush of some sort. This is interesting, so these are usually just a straight on brush. This one has that curve to it. May have been ahead of its time. Oh wow, some kind of a uh, semi porcelain plate. Looks like uh, it's kind of ornate. It's got some iron leaf pattern. It's a plain white, but uh, it's no doubt from a family that was somewhat well off for the time. Got a few more. It's like uh, circa 1900 pieces. Uh, maybe a beer bottle. William Franzen and Son from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Super popular company. On a tooltop malt extract. Let's see. Made by the American Bottle Company. Had a, a foil band around the top there. It's like a prescription bottle. Oh, it's got some increments. It's a Victor style. A reinforced lip. I'd put this at 1908 to 1916. Look at all this stuff. Wow. What are these? They look to all be the same shape. Maybe prescription bottles of some sort. This pit is just stacked. Let's see here. Oh, that's a big one. It's a prescription bottle, I believe a 16 ounce. And another, this one was made by the Western Bottle Manufacturing Company. And another, I wonder if someone in the house was sick at one point. This is a lot of medicine. And another, this one had a uh, indent for a paper label on the front. There's no embossing in the bottle though. <laughs> Look at that. That's a 32 ounce size. These are not found often. Has uh, graduations on the side. I'd put this thing at about 1910. Another one of these. No embossing. There was definitely something going on with these. Looks like a little bottle here. Uh, maybe a little drugstore bottle. Uh, doesn't look like there's anything embossed on it. It's a tool top though. It could have held some kind of a medicine or some kind of tincture. All kinds of stuff in here. A little uh, graduated oval style prescription bottle, uh, 1908 to 1916. Oh wow, looks like some kind of uh, Bakelite syringe of some sort. It's a, a precursor to plastic. Another prescription bottle. It's uh, got no embossing, no graduations on it. I'd put it at about 1900, 1905. Some more broken ones. 
Look at these things, they're just stacked in here. There's another one. Same thing, no embossing, would have had a paper label. And another, oh, this one's got a reinforced lip. Uh, it's amazing, these things didn't break with how many of them are stacked in the same spot. Brush, some kind of a Bakelite piece. This one's a little different style than the other one we dug. It doesn't have as much of a curve to it. What's going on here? <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. Look at that. Some kind of a bisque figurine in it. Looks like the person's yawning. So it got some good colors to it. mason jar that's an earlier style too look at that just says mason's patent i usually don't find them with that it's usually the patent date as well it's a uh, not a ground lip i'd put it at about 1900 1905 Haviland, France. Haviland and Company on the back. And this is a really nice floral pattern. It's kind of typical of that turn of the century era. Another prescription bottle. This one's made by the Western Bottle Manufacturing Company. Okay, Tool Crown Top Ink. That's uh, Sanford's Inks and Library Paste. That's another uh, circa 1900 piece. And this flipped out. It's like a reinforced lip. Uh, another drugstore prescription bottle. Huh, what's going on here? Got all kinds of stuff. Looks like an applied top whiskey. Okay, this is English made. Those markings don't look American. It's a mold blown, but a applied top. And another prescription bottle made by the Western Bottle Manufacturing Company. An early machine made beer. A uh, crown top, circa 1910. I've been working on this pitcher. I think it's ready to come out. I noticed the handle sticking out and started picking around it. Wow. Look at that. That is ironstone china. This is so ornate. This might be the most ornate pitcher I've ever dug. It's like an applied crown top, uh, AB Connected beer, AB Connected's on the bottom. Looks like some beer bottles. There's a wild use layer here. There's stuff all over the place. Everything's kind of intertwined. Tooled crown top beer. 
Made by the American Bottle Company. Kind of broken beer. Looks like an English ale in some kind of jar. Okay, yep. It's damaged, but it's an applied top. It has a three-piece mold. It's some kind of newer looking jar. The age is really mixed up in this upper layer. I'm wondering if it was, you know, it was filled in later on and it's had a mixture of garbage in it. A few more pieces. Looks like some kind of tooled top. Uh, beer bottle made by the William Franz and Sons, Glasswork of Milwaukee. Huh, some kind of a tool top food product. I think some kind of pickled goods container. Pressed glass. This is an old one. You know, this uh, might date back to the 1870s or 80s. Hmm. A little maybe aspirin bottle of some sort. Uh, it's kind of cool. It's a uh, rounded on bottom. It's got a ground lip, threaded top. Got a few more pieces here. I'm not sure how much deeper the pit goes. It's like a tool top prescription bottle, no embossing on it. Oh wow, some kind of a tool top perfume. No, no, that has a glass stopper still on the top. Oh, this one's been staring at me a while. It's like a liquor bottle of some sort. Wow, Harvard Rye. That's a tooled top. I can't say I've ever dug one of these before. It's got a monogram on it. That's kind of cool. Another prescription bottle. No embossing, circa 1905. This might be intact. Looks like a semi-porcelain plate. Oh, uh, you know what? There it is. Yeah, it's a, let's see, Haviland Limoges from uh, Haviland, France. This was a really high-end type of porcelain back in the day. It's got that kind of standard floral pattern. This was a fairly common pattern for its time. A liquor flask. Looks like it's a tooled top. No, it's early machine made. Now the mixed up age in this thing, I'm wondering if it could be an outhouse pit that had been cleaned out at some point. A couple more. I'm not sure. This might be it. Uh, looks like some kind of toiletry product. It's a tooled top, circa 1905. Oh, look at that. A little uh, porcelain figurine of some sort. Looks like the head broke off. That must have been why it was discarded. And a tool top prescription bottle, Marvel style. I've never seen that before. Look at that Marvel stamped on the bottom. Must have been a Marvel oval. It was a style used by the glass company. It's a reinforced lip. I'd put this somewhere between 1908 and 1916. We're hitting clay. This pit's done. Here's the hall. Everything did it back to about 1905, 1910. There's a good variety of pieces. I got a food bottle, wine, some liquor, some canning jars, ironstone whiteware, 
some toiletry products, a good few beers, citrate of magnesia and ink, and a bunch of prescription drugstore bottles. I'm wondering if there was some kind of ailment a member of the household was suffering from. Well, there you have it. We'll get this thing filled back in. I spent a good amount of time gritting and probing back here. Once I got to the north side of the property line, over here by these lilac bushes, I pushed the rod through and felt some bricks and stove ashes. That's a good indication the ground's been disturbed. So I'm going to get the topsoil off and see what's going on. We're nearly through the topsoil, just about into the cap layer, and notice some artifacts sticking out here. Uh, looks like some kind of oval shaped bottle it's stuck in there. I can barely get my trowel through. Wow. Wow! McLean's liver and kidney balm, St. Louis. That's an early tooled top bottle. I found these in saloon pits across the Dakotas. Was uh, definitely from that saloon era. Looks like a little Umbrella ink. These are usually stamped with the company name. It's a Sanford's. Sanford's ink. Uh, what do we have here? Benton. Benton Holiday and Company, Chicago. That's a shoe polish bottle. And we've got several brass pieces here. Uh, a couple lantern burners. This piece was some iron leaf design. I don't know exactly what that's from, although it's really cool. Got a marble, a button, and a square nail. And down here, I've got several pieces showing. This one looks like a really early mason jar. It's a good aqua color. I see some bubbles in the glass. There's just stuff everywhere in here. Yeah, there's another one, wow. All right, here we go. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's got the Hero Cross, Mason's Patent, November 30th, 1858. That cross is the mark for the Hero Glassworks. That's everywhere in here. Oh wow, Dr. Kilmer's Swampra Kidney, Liver, and Bladder Cure, Binghamton, New York. That's a classic patent medicine. Uh, this is a, oh wow, it's got a kind of floral design on it, I think it's like a creamer of some sort, some kind of coffee creamer. Oh, and uh, part two, uh, girl's tea set. It's a little uh, kettle of some sort. Well, we're into a use layer of some sort. Sounders Elegant Flavoring Extracts, Royal Remedy, 
Dayton, Ohio. I've dug these before. I think this was a popular product. This thing has some good age to it, pre-1900 for sure. And so far, it seems like this site dates back to around 1900, maybe a bit earlier. There's some dinnerware pieces on the way out. Looks like uh, this one's broken, but it's uh, some kind of English-made piece. You can see the coat of arms. several broken plates um, we have here the WEP company Ironstone China A solid use layer down there I gotta get this one out Easy Bright Improved Shoe Dressing. I believe this is actually an aqua color and there's uh, bluing inside of it, making it look blue. intact coffee cup. That's a uh, Ironstone China. This must have been dropped down by mistake. Well, we're into the cap layer and there is a ton of pieces here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, this one I uncovered first so let's go for it. I've been wondering what it is. Oh, looks like some kind of sewing machine oil. Okay, sperm selling machine oil. That was somewhat generic. These are found all across the US. I've actually dug some in Eastport, Maine. This plate may actually be intact. I'm kind of carefully picking away at it. Oh, there it is. These were almost always broken. Some kind of ironstone whiteware piece made by Excelsior Porcelain. There's some kind of a monogram on it. I'm not entirely sure what that stands for. Alright. Yeah, I can't even get my trowel through here. Alright, easy bright. Uh, improved shoe dressing. Yeah, that's uh, another one. It looks like it has some bluing in it, so maybe the product was actually blue. Alright. Huh. Looks like an older bottle. Huh. Yeah, that's really early. It's a really thin glass. You can see it's a honey amber color. It's beautiful. Like a little uh, Vaseline container. Chesborough Manufacturing Company, Vaseline. That's an early one. And another. like some kind of panel bottle. Okay, it's broken. Another sperm sewing machine oil. It looks like some kind of shoe dressing. BF Stinson and Company, Buffalo, New York. That's an older one. B.F. Stinson and Company, Buffalo, New York. Oh, Easy Bright Improved Shoe Dressing. Okay, that's the that's one and the same.
Looks like a very old beer bottle here. It's a blob top. Oh, looks like it's intact. We have an applied top on this thing. No embossing. That's got some great age. Oh, some little bottle. Uh, maybe some kind of pharmaceutical or apothecary. It's a tool top. Stuff everywhere in here. It's like another beer. You got some color. No way. Whoa. <laughs> We've got both sides to this thing. That's ornate. I think that's a part of a tea set or something. That pattern's outstanding. All right, it's kind of wedged in. It's got some good color. That Mason's patent. That's beautiful. Look at that big bubble in it. That is something else. Another early applied top beer. I think it's a turn mold. Yeah, turn mold, no other embossing. Oh, kind of a simple pattern. I've seen this before. It's got like a clover type design and uh, looks like on the back, this was made by the Alfred Meakin Company of England. These are, I wanna say pre-1890. Oh, this piece just fell out. It's got a ground lip. Whoa, cereal milk? <laughs> What's going on with that? Cereal milk. Looks like some kind of pharmaceutical. I noticed some stamping on this. I believe it's English made. Let's see. These are usually broken, these earthenware pieces. They were used until broken and discarded, but every once in a while I get something intact. What do we have here? Whoa. Okay, that's an old teapot. That is ornate. Um, the stamping on the bottom here, HJW, made in England, and this pattern is something else. Look at that. And there's some kind of ironstone piece here, but this mason jar is above it. Maybe we'll get an intact one, almost. What is it? Okay, another Hero Glassworks, Mason's Patent Jar. Huh, it's like a ironstone creamer. Royal Semi-Porcelain, Johnson Brothers, England. I've dug some Johnson Brothers pieces before and this one's fairly standard. Hmm, some kind of ointment pot. Ah, oh, the lid's on tight. That's uh, got some heavy glass on bottom. in a shoe fly flask, no embossing. Oh wow, here's the lid, the lid to that 
Not a tea kettle. Kind of wedged in here. It's a big one. Oh, no embossing. This would have been something though. Yeah, that's a 16 ounce. Would have had a paper label on it. I see some embossing. That's an amber bottle. Brian's Root Beer. This bottle makes five gallons. Manufactured by Williams Davis Brooks and Company, Detroit, Michigan. Brian's Root Beer. That's really cool. And I like how the bottle is a root beer color. Alright. Of this one I've been working on, looks like it might be a bitters. Wow. That's something. Um, that's a tooled top. Yeah, that's a bitters bottle. That's an interesting shape. See, this one looks like, oh wow, what's that? Huh, some kind of monogram on it. Singer Manufacturing Company. Okay, yeah, it's a Singer sewing machine oil bottle. See that monogram on it, it's, that's really cool. Never dug one with that kind of monogram. Now let's see. Oh, beer bottle. Looks like there's some. Uh, this was an old one. Oh yeah. That's got an applied top. This thing's early. AB77 on the bottom. This thing's uh, pre-1890. This is Dakota Territory era. Oh, medicine. Let's see. Looks like a medicine. Oh yeah, Hamlin's Wizard Oil. This one's a, got an early top. Oh, it's tooled top. This was a popular product around town. Now this mason jar looks like it could be intact. I'm not getting my hopes up. I know everyone's been broken. We got one. We got a whole one. Mason's patent, November 30th, 1858. I love the crudity of these things. All right, I see some embossing. What do we have here? Excelsior Drugstore, F.A. Breck, Yankton. Now, uh, I know from experience these have an 1888 patent date on bottom. This is uh, nearing that Dakota Territory or circa 1890, I'd put it up. Oh, hey, another uh, Bryant's root beer extract. Looks like a liquor flask. Yeah, shoe fly style liquor flask. No end in sight. More pieces, uh, looks like some paneled bottles. Uh, oh wow, Gillette's Double Extract. That's got a owl sitting on a crescent moon. That's really cool. It's like a sewing machine oil. Yep. Sperm sewing machine oil. It's like another sewing machine oil. Yeah. Uh, 
It is, there's no embossing on this one. And some kind of shoe polish. Oh, BF Stinson and Company. Uh, Buffalo, New York, USA. This is getting earlier. That's That's got some really nice color to it as well. like some kind of lamp top here, lamp chimney. Oh, little uh, plate to a children's tea set. Looks like it's ironstone china. Oh, let's see, these things are almost always broken and they're super fragile. This one would actually be intact. That's wild. This likely fell down by mistake way back when. Pit drops a ways. Oh, I wonder how deep this thing is. Looks like some kind of extract bottle. Whoa! Yeah, <laughs> standard lemon. Look at that label. That's almost like new. There's a really nice green color here. Let's see what's going on. Got kind of lodged in there. Okay. Yeah, it's a. Uh, Applied top wine bottle. That's a beautiful color. It's got a lot of seeds, uh, seed bubbles in the glass. It's like there's something under it. Some kind of a beer bottle. Uh, F FH Glassworks. That's the uh, fathering ham, I believe. Oh, this pit just keeps going. There's pieces all over the place. Oh, kind of an or ornate ketchup bottle. Got a tooled top. No embossing on it would have had a paper label. Looks like another Vaseline container. This one's got no markings on it. It just keeps dropping in. This is wild. I wonder how deep this thing goes. We're already down about six feet. It's like a sewing machine oil. No embossing. I found the bottom, we're roughly seven feet down. It is a narrow pit. There's a few more pieces here. Looks like a footed type prescription bottle. Uh, some kind of liniment. There's a, no embossing on this thing though. It's intact. Uh, I believe this is a hand lamp of some sort. It's an old oil lamp anyway. Oh, Mrs. Winslow's Soothing Syrup. Okay, this was a popular product in the turn of the century. It was known as the baby killer. Uh, it was given to colicky babies and had morphine in it. Uh, unfortunately, some infants overdosed. Uh, giving it the nickname Baby Killer. All right, George Tamman, the druggist, Yankton, South Dakota. Wow, what's it? <laughs> wow. Look at that old spittoon. That's earthenware. This thing is early. That is really something. Looks like an early beer bottle here. Let's see. 
Wow. Yeah, it's got an applied top on it. That thing's almost black glass. What company made this? Okay, the Streeter Bottle and Glass Company. Look at that thing, that's cool. So a couple more pieces in here. Let's see. Oh hey, another embossed drugstore bottle. George Tamman, the druggist, Yankton, South Dakota. Dates back to about 1895. Oh wow, okay, we've got a couple more pieces here. What's this? Oh, it's a broken uh, gold rimmed plate. Maybe another beer. Looks like a ink. Probably a Bixby, I recognize that shape. I think it was patented. Yep, March 6th, 1883. Yeah, so that's a Bixby. Let's see. All right, the beer. Okay, it's an English ale. It's a turn mold piece. Another really dark bottle. Oh, that might be it for this corner. And uh, over here, some kind of Sedona piece. Definitely caught my eye. Wow, I wonder if that's a tobacco jar or something? That's wild. I've never seen one in two-tone like that before. There's no stamping on it, though. Here's the hull. Got a good variety of pieces. The layer dated back to about 1895. Got some canning jars, some liquor flasks, lamp chimney, a bitters bottle, a bunch of dinnerware, the most notable being that teapot and that spittoon. Also got a wine bottle, some beers and that English ale, some medicines, extracts, that lamp, some drugstore bottles. Oh, well, there it is. On to the next one. You'll see I kicked some marks in the ground here. I started by gritting this lot out and probing the property lines, which is generally where a pit would be. I'm not sure if you can hear this, but there's some crunching. That's likely buried stove ashes. That's a good sign there's a pit here. So we'll get it opened up. Do a solid use layer. This is no doubt an old outhouse pit. Some kind of bottle here. Wow. St. Jacob's Oil. This is an early one. It's a uh, A. Vogeler and Company, Baltimore, Maryland. This was a popular product. Looks like a. Wow, the age of this thing is incredible. This is an applied top. It's like a hinge mold bottom. It's a knife edge liquor flask. This is pre-1880. Looks like a pitcher. Some kind of ironstone piece. Oh, no stamping on it. Solid use layer, there's a very ornate lamp. Looks like uh, both pieces are there. This thing is beautiful. It's got uh, some kind of embossed glass on it. You can see in the globe there. This is incredible. It's gotta be 1860s or 70s. This is an old one, wow. This was uh, likely used by the first drugstore in the Dakotas, Mills and Purdy, I believe. An extract bottle. The label's somewhat there, although it's not legible. Okay, 
a very early shoe fly flask. The C, an embossed C on the bottom, no other embossing. I found bottom, working my way across. There's a few pieces left. Looks like a porcelain type doorknob. This could have been either to the outhouse or the house that stood here before. Looks like a French square style drugstore bottle. Oh, this is heavy. Uh, that is an old beer mug. I believe this is pressed glass. Whoa! That is something. This is an old plate. Look at that design. That is really something. This could be 1860s. I probed out another spot. I kicked some marks in the ground showing the dimensions. Seems like there's some glass and ashes down there, so it could be good. We'll get it opened up. nearly through the topsoil. Got four pieces showing. It's like a it's kind of toiletry. Huh. Rick Ricksicker perfume. Never heard of it. It's a tool top. Okay, that's great age. That's a Blake style. This is 1880s. Mm. What's going on with this? Makes five gallons of a delicious drink. Manufactured for, ma manufactured only by Charles E. Hires, Philadelphia. Okay, Hires improved root beer. It's a root beer extract. Iris is actually still sold today. It looks like some kind of medicine. Oh, Hamlin's Wizard Oil. Tooled top. Find these bottles all over town. Looks like some kind of extract bottle. Ball neck panel style. Could be a medicine, no embossing on it though. One looks like okay, a, a drinking glass. Yeah, this one's definitely a drinking glass. Wow, I have no idea what this thing is. It looks brass. If anyone has an idea, drop a comment. And it's like a lamp globe. This would have been for an old uh, kerosene lantern. Oh. All right, uh, looks like a Vaseline container. Chestro Manufacturing Company, Vaseline. This is one of their earlier ones. They had you know, screw on tops later. Let's see that white color, that's lime. Uh, that's an indicator we may be digging in an old outhouse pit. Lime was thrown over these way back when to disinfect it and neutralize the smell. What do we have here? Mrs. Winslow's Soothing Syrup. That's a classic. Many households across the U.S. had this back in the day. 
another one fell out here. Maybe a Vaseline or Colgate and Company, New York. Okay, I believe this is some kind of toiletry. Oh wow, oh this is an old one. This is a old mason jar. I see the front has the mason's patent. It's very faintly embossed, most of them are. But this one's clear and it has a snowflake embossed on the back. I've only found a handful of these over the years. Uh, none were intact, unfortunately. Looks like a big old liquor flask here and uh, maybe the bottom of a medicine or an extract. Well into a use layer. I've seen a bunch of undigested seeds. Look at the size of that flask. I wonder, that must be a quart size. Wow. All right, little tool top extract, no embossing on it. Yeah, definitely an old outhouse pill. Look at that color change. Oh, here we go. Another uh, Hamlin's Wizard Oil tool top. Thing. Whoa! Duncan, Duncan Central Brewery, Detroit, Michigan. That's an early piece. Looks like they broke the top off when they were opening it. That must have been why it was discarded, otherwise it would have been returned. This is maybe some kind of toiletry or perfume container. It's got a really strange kind of pastel purple glass. That's wild. No end in sight. Still into a solid use layer. Looks like another Hamlin's. Some other paneled piece here. Standard Oil Company. Huh. Favorite, Cleveland, Ohio. I wonder if that has any relation to the uh, classic standard oil company with all those enamel signs. Huh. Huh. I don't know what's going on here? Oh, wow, that's a knife edge liquor flask. Look at that, that's gotta be 1880, maybe earlier. Now this thing, this was ornate. Wow, some kind of a decorative glass. Looks like it was pressed, it's not cut. I'm into a solid use layer. There are a ton of chicken bones down here. I'm not sure if I've ever dug this many before, but I thought I was on bottom, but then I saw this flask sticking into the clay. It turns out I'm just digging into another cap layer. There should be some pieces down below. Look at that. That thing's mint. That's a quart liquor flask. Has a slug plate in the middle, likely for a paper label. Oh, hey. It's like a pair of doorknobs, uh, foxwood. They were made to look like wood. They're actually some kind of ceramic material. Uh oh, that's an older lamp top. I'm thinking this is 1880s. They call this a pie crust style. 
just because it looks like a pie crust. I broke through the cap layer and there is another use layer. Uh, there's all kinds of broken pieces and been working on this. Oh, it looks like a hawk wine. Nice. Oh yeah, that's early. It's a turn mold. It has an applied top. 1880s. This right here, it has some good color to it. Whoa! That's wild. Look at that. That's something else. It's a some kind of a vase. Look at that color. That pattern is amazing. Here's the results from the second and third pit. This one was incredibly early. Everything dated back to the 1870s. Got a good variety here. Some medicine bottles, sewing machine, oil, liquor flasks. That uh, Union Oval was really something. Some glassware, household goods, medicine bottle and a doorknob. This one wasn't too bad either. Got a little variety as well. A perfume bottle, those Vaselines, some medicines, liquor flasks and a wine, lantern top, some household goods, that beer bottle from Michigan, that was really something, some extracts, a drugstore bottle. Well, there you have it. This is a classic turn-of-the-century style house. It could have actually been made by Sears and Roebuck. And the backyard is wide. I believe it's a double wide lot, 100 feet in length. There's a good amount of ground to cover back here. There is a cement slab and a garage, but we'll get out a grid and start probing. If you look close, you'll see I kicked some marks in the ground. I pushed a probe rod in and hit a loss of compaction, along with some stove ashes and a few objects. That's a good indicator of an early site. We'll get this thing opened up. about through the cap layer. I have a few pieces exposed here. Looks like some glassware. Let's see. Uh, looks like a prescription bottle. All right, John B. Hudson, pharmacist, Yankton, South Dakota. I've dug a bunch of these before. It has an 1892 patent date on bottom. like some kind of food product, maybe a pickle bottle. Sometimes these will have a little monogram on them. This one doesn't. Has some nice bubbles in the glass though, tooled top. All right, little uh, shoe fly liquor flask. Looks like a, a pre-1900 piece. Another tooled top. Just about into the use layer. Looks like a old ketchup bottle here. I might have something underneath it as well. Uh, yeah, tooled top ketchup. Sometimes these will have the manufacturer's name, company name. Not on this one. Huh. Might have an embossed one here. I think it might be an embossed drugstore bottle. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Let's see. Oh wow, what's going on with this? Lactopeptine New York Pharmacal Association. So uh, it's in a, a French square style drugstore bottle, but I believe this is a patent medicine.
it's like a pickle bottle. Uh, no embossing, it's a tooled top. And as you can see, we found a cable line. I'll have to work around that. Another ketchup. It actually looks like it has some ketchup residue inside of it still, and that's another tooled top example. Still working through the cap layer and located a few more bottles. Looks like uh, we're getting close to the use layer. The ground's starting to soften up. Let's see, I don't want to break it. What do we have here? This is a very unusual bottle made by the Whittle Tatum Company. Looks like a prescription bottle, but it could be some kind of toiletry. Could have held a some kind of hand cream or oil of some sort. Let's see, it's a tiny one. Got a got some embossing. Purdy and Brecht druggist, Yankton, Dakota Territory. That's wild. Okay, so this predates the state of South Dakota. Uh, November 3rd, 1889 is when South Dakota became a state, so this was made prior to that. Let's see here. It's a cologne bottle. Top's broken, they must have uh, broken it, prying the cork out. No, you know what? We've got some writing on it. Uh, you know what, there's not enough to make out. You can see there is some writing on the shoulder, but uh, yeah, definitely some kind of cologne bottle. Uh, it's a prescription bottle. Uh, GW Frost and Sin and Company, City Drugstore, Yankton, South Dakota. So this may be the biggest example of these bottles I've dug, this was likely an eight ounce. Let's see, tooled top ketchup bottle. No embossing, uh, dates back to about 1905. Getting into the use layer on this side, there's several pieces here, then some broken glass as well. Uh, this is a very tiny bottle. This might be the smallest bottle I've ever dug, and you know what? This could be an oldie. It might uh, predate a lot of the stuff in the pit. It looks like it has a flared lip on it. Uh, it's hard to say for sure though. Working around this line's been a nightmare. Looks like a little cologne bottle. Huh. What's this say? Hoyt's 10 cent cologne. Uh, Hoyt, I believe, was a German cologne manufacturer. His bottles are found all across the U.S. Let's see. Looks like some kind of preserve or pickle bottle. See those specks? Those are undigested seeds. I believe we're digging in an old outhouse pit. like a you know what this is an old milk bottle this is a very early milk bottle it's a tooled top you can see it had a slug plate here it was discarded because it was broken these were almost always returned this is actually remarkable for this part of the country oh, looks like a lamp chimney it's a yeah I got a pie crest top on it uh, Machine made piece. This is a uh, circa 1900, maybe a little earlier. Look at all this stuff. Wow, that's got an interesting pattern. It's got a 
some leaves on it. Looks like a semi-porcelain type plate it was uh, more ornate than anything. prescription bottle. It's got some uh, paneled sides it looks like. It's a early druggist lip style. I'd put it at, a, at about 1895. Oh wow, what's this? Okay. A Whitmore bottle from Boston. You know, these might be a little early. I'm thinking this could be circa 1890, maybe uh, even back into the 1880s. That's a really nice color. What's this? Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, it has to have a stamp on it. Let's see. It's a C. Hatsworth, New NW England. So that's a, kind of got a brown glaze to it. I've noticed, uh, well, it's a transfer wear. This is usually earlier. I'd probably put this at the, at the 1880s, some kind of a serving tray of some sort. On the northwest corner of this pit, and there's all kinds of stuff here. I uncovered this, which would be a beer bottle first. Uh, Looks like a, okay, no, it's a, I believe a pharmaceutical type product. Uh, MCW on the base, now I'm not exactly sure what that is, uh, likely the company that manufactured the product sold in this, it's a tooled top. Oh, there's another one, there's all kinds of stuff in this corner. another one let's see here oh wow okay this is a cologne bottle uh, still got the glass stopper and it looks like it was a glass on glass now you know what I dug that broken one earlier with writing on it I think this is a whole one so it's from Paris lieutenant Peaver uh, written on the shoulder there you can see that lieutenant Peaver then Paris uh, yeah, France was notorious for manufacturing toiletries, so yeah, definitely some kind of cologne. And another one. Okay. Uh, could be a little patent med of some sort. It's a tool top. There's no embossing on it. Could be a prescription bottle. Uh, well, you know what? There's no embossing on this thing. It's full of some kind of powder. My guess would be, my best guess would be some kind of pharmaceutical product. And looks like a shoe polish. Oh, glycerol. Okay, this is a tooled top. I've dug these before. Uh, my guess is some kind of patent medicine. Looks like it's full of groundwater. All right. What do we have here? Huh. This one's unusual. Looks like some kind of toiletry, but there's no embossing. Kind of interesting with those rounded edges on it. like a little uh, apothecary type bottle. It could have had uh, little pills in it of some sort, some kind of homeopathic vial. All right, and, uh, yeah, some kind of uh, ball neck panel extract bottle, no embossing, would have had a paper label on the front.
broken mason jar. Huh. I don't know what this thing is. It seems to have an odd shape. <laughs> what? I've never seen one of these. This is weird. It's not broken. Uh, it's got some kind of a flat panel on bottom and uh, it has some kind of oil inside of it. Uh, no embossing. I couldn't even tell you. I couldn't even begin to guess what this thing is. This corner just keeps giving. I cleaned it out. Another bottle fell out here. Whoa. Arden Clark Druggist, Vermilion, South Dakota. I don't think I've ever seen one of these. Uh, this style I know was made by the Dean Foster Company. This dates back to right around 1890. This is a remarkable find here. There's a, another little drugstore bottle. Oh, no embossing. This is getting early though. It's a Philadelphia oval style with a druggist style lip on it. That kind of sharper lip at the end. This is again, 1880s, 1890s. Kind of a, I don't know, candy dish or tray of some sort. It's a pressed glass piece. It has some damage on the back. That's likely why it was discarded. But it's remarkably whole for what I usually find. There's all kinds of stuff down here. Got an embossed bottle. There's all kinds of embossing. Four ounce. Marchand's Peroxide of Hydrogen. Uh, medical. Medically? New York. Or medical. It's medical hydrogen peroxide. So uh, that's a tooled top on it. I like how uh, proper it sounds back in the day. Uh, peroxide of Hydrogen. That's a cool bottle. like a cylinder whiskey, three-piece mold, tooled top, uh, circa 1890. Looks like we have a couple prescription bottles here. Uh, just about got them out. Here we go. John B. Hudson Pharmacist, Yankton, South Dakota. Again, that's an 1892 patent on this thing. And another one. And, and these are made by the Whittle Tatum Company. I've dug a ton of these from a ton of different druggists. So, uh, there's a little, oh, there it is. These little homeopathic vials. This one's got some kind of, looks like powder inside of it. Uh, yeah, some kind of apothecary pharmaceutical product, likely. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff in here. broken lamp chimneys. I believe this could be a ring off of a wagon hub. It could be a, off of a barrel, something along those lines. What do we have here? Excelsior Drugstore Yankton. Now, you know what? I don't think I've ever dug one of these in that Whittle Tatum style. This is that 1892 patent. 
kind of working my way across the bottom. I saw some kind of an ornate glassware piece here. Uh, let's see, everything's kind of packed in down here. I got a couple pieces, so this is interesting. I believe it's uh, pressed glass. You can see it has a couple legs on it. The backside is damaged, likely why they discarded it. This could have been a toothpick holder or some kind of just uh, decorative piece of some sort. And it looks like uh, some kind of Bakelite piece. Uh, sometimes these have uh, threads. Yeah, there's a thread on that end and a thread on this end. Now I have no idea what this thing was. If anyone has an idea, feel free to drop a comment. Let's see. Oh, this is unusual. I think I've dug one of these before. The one I dug had embossing on it. I don't think this one does. It could be a perfume atomizer. It's a tool top. Yeah. Looks like a plate. Okay, it's got a some kind of a brown stenciling on it. Columbia Semi Porcelain, Johnson Brothers, England. They had a major company back in the day. All sorts of patterns. This one I believe is an 1880s style. Okay, another one of these uh, hyd peroxide of hydrogen, Marchand. Marchand's peroxide of hydrogen medical medicinal new york so it's medicinal uh, hydrogen peroxide this one's got a tooled top it looks like some kind of pickle bottle pickled goods container now the top's knocked off but these usually don't have any embossing it's a tooled top pickle bottle I'd put this at about 1890. All right, here's a bulb. This could have been associated with that Bacolite piece. I'm not completely sure. I've seen these before. It's an early form of rubber. Could have been to a uh, breast pump. I found the sides and bottom. I'm working my way through this little trash layer. I saw some biscuit porcelain here. Looks like some doll parts. Looks like a, yeah, some kind of German made doll. There's the face, it goes something like that. And uh, sometimes these will have marks on them, the name of the doll, or the size. Okay, this one has a 1900. So that's, uh, I believe, the year. So this would have been made in Germany in 1900. Looks like we've got another one here. Huh, there's definitely a, a girl living at the residence, likely the daughter of the folks who lived here. Oh, I think this might be the last piece little uh, machine-made homeopathic vial. This pit's done. The pit's all finished up. We had a good haul. Everything did it back to around 1890. Got a good variety here. Some chemical bottles, liquor bottles, broken iron stone, semi-china pieces, lamp chimney, ketchup bottles, pharmaceuticals, some pickled goods containers that oil bottle, shoe polish, homeopathic files. We've also got some patent medicines, broken dinnerware, and a good few embossed drugstore bottles, including that one from Vermilion and the Dakota Territory piece. Those two were no doubt my favorite. Well, there you have it. We'll get this thing filled back in. You'll see I kicked some marks in the ground this is an area I found that had a loss of compaction. I also hit some stove ashes and glass down there. That's a good indicator of an early site. 
It's at least five feet deep. We'll get it opened up. About four feet down, I seem to be getting into some kind of use layer, and this stuff seems early. I'm guessing it predates the house that's standing here. That's a good sign. There's all kinds of stuff down here. This looks like a ribbed type bottle. Look at that. That's early. That's an old pepper sauce. See, it's got the rib design on it. No embossing. Looks like some kind of liniment. This is definitely pre-1900 tool top. Some kind of prescription bottle, uh, French square style. Uh, no druggist name embossed, unfortunately. Again, pre-1900. As well as China. Oh, there's some stuff behind it there. That's an early pattern. We might have a full plate here. Got a full plate. Looks like uh, some kind of English marking on the bottom. Okay, Johnson. Johnson, England. It was uh, the Johnson Brothers, I believe. It's a semi-porcelain piece. You can see that brown color. That's always indicative of earlier China from the company. That's ornate. Looks like some kind of a dish, some kind of a pressed glass, I believe. That's, again, pre-1900 for sure. Whoa, look at that. That's a big doll head. It seems uh, the family that lived here may have been well off. It no doubt broke and then they threw it down the pit. What is this thing? Oh, it's an old uh, creamer. This thing is early. Look at that, it's extremely thin. Super fragile, that uh, handle is something else. Got a couple bottles here, they look early. Wow. That's a Blake-style prescription bottle made by the McCulley Glassworks. This thing's got to be 1870s, 1880s. That's amazing. That looks like a extract-type bottle. It's a panel of no embossing. here. Oh, this is an early prescription bottle uh, made by the Illinois Glass Company. Looks like it has uh, some kind of panels on the sides as well. I'm not sure if I've dug one of this style. Wow, look at 
that. This is a ground lip. Mason's patent jar. It's got a monogram on it. This thing's got to be 1880s, maybe late 1870s. I think we've got something embossed here. Some kind of an aqua color. This pit seems to be incredibly early. French, French luster, some kind of a shoe polish. That's an early piece. Looks to be a pre-1890 for sure. And a little prescription bottle. F and F Company on the bottom. You can see it would have had a paper label on the front there. And we have here. Wow. This is amazing. This is Alaska Red, I believe the pattern is. It's got a British registry mark. I'm not an expert on this, but I believe this dates back to the 1860s or 70s. And the pattern on it, it's amazing. Finding something like this in the Dakotas is outstanding. This is day one of settlement. Got a few pieces, including what I believe could be an old lamp. Uh, uncovered this first. Let's see, <laughs> nice. I believe it's a pressed glass cologne bottle. It's in the shape of an old time revolver. Uh, I don't find these often. I do find them once in a while, though. It's like a. Uh, oh. Dr. Price's Delicious Flavoring Extracts. Okay, I've dug these in early pits across the Dakotas. Uh, I was pulling these up on a military fort as well. So something here. Looks like a, yeah, a little uh, saucer for a, a girl's tea set. So we found that doll head in this. Uh, they definitely had at least a girl living in the house. Now, what do we have here? Looks like some kind of lamp. Oh, it's stuck in there. It might be intact. Whoa! <laughs> Look at that! This thing's, it's pressed glass. I'm guessing 1860s or 70s. Uh, would have been filled with whale oil, possibly kerosene. This is one of the coolest things I've found. The pit is all finished up. It was an early one for this part of the country. Got a good variety of pieces. A lot was broken, although a lot of these earlier sites, things were reused until broken. Got some canning jar pieces, uh, lamp base, that cologne bottle shaped like a gun, a little oval medicine, a few prescription bottles, a couple extracts, shoe polish, a pepper sauce, pitcher, some plates. We did find the rest of the pieces to that Alaska Red. There's some more fragments, a couple broken lanterns. Well, there you have it. We'll get this thing filled back in and move on to the next spot. This is a big pit. I'm thinking five feet by five feet. I pushed a probe rod through the ground and felt some objects, possibly some stove ashes. We'll get this thing opened up.
found a cable line, I always say make sure you call and locate before you dig. This is fine, but the shovel could easily cut through it. Down here we've got all kinds of pieces exposed. Looks like we're dealing with a circa 1910 site. There's a looks like an early machine made ketchup bottle. Uh, I see a company name. Okay, it's made by the H.J. Hines Company. That's the same company still producing condiments today. Uh, let's see, this one's about ready. Another uh, machine made piece, a uh, ball neck panel style. I believe it's an extract of some sort. And an ink bottle, Carter's. It's a Carter's ink that was a very popular ink product back in the day. What's going on with this? Looks like some kind of cold cream container. There's all kind of writing on the bottom. Imperial cheese. What's this say? McLaren's Imperial cheese. I'd never dug one of these before. I wonder if it's some kind of cottage cheese product. It's a uh, pressed glass. I'm guessing this is another one. Huh. Royal Lunch and Cheese. Yeah, it might be a different company. Yeah, Royal Lunch and Cheese. It's the same age as the other one, early machine made. Looks like maybe some kind of big preserve jar. It's got a paneled base, not a soda. <laughs> it's a decanter. So the top's broken off. These would have been refilled. So they likely broke it and discarded it. This would have sat on a dresser or a bar and held brandy or some kind of spirits. Oh, it's like a mason jar lid insert. Uh, what kind of company? Oh yeah, Boyd's. Yeah, porcelain lined. I believe they were the biggest manufacturer of these mason jar lids at the time. Some kind of a preserve jar would have had a bale top on it. Would have held some kind of uh, condiment or food product of some sort. All right, that's an earlier style ball jar. It's a dropped a tr dropped a double loop ball perfect mason. Oh, this dates back to about 1905. see here. Okay, a tooled top, there we go. Uh, looks like a maybe apothecary type thing, maybe a, a toiletry. We've got all kinds of pieces down here. This one no doubt caught my eye. It looks like a modern piece, but it's actually enamelware. Now these came in all different kinds of patterns. It's a I got a really nice look to it. It's a cooking pot of some sort. Looks like we have a beer or mason jar. Yeah, mason jar. It's a ball uh, dropped a double loop. Ball mason jar. It's a classic looking one there. That's some kind of a preserve jar. Oh wait, no, another mason jar. Oh wow, okay, so this is a generic one. It just says mason on it. It's a uh, circa 1905, I suppose. Huh, looks like it could be uh, some kind of dressing bottle. I'm not seeing any embossing on it. And yeah, nothing, it would have had a paper label, but it has a ground lip. So that's a little earlier. It could be closer to 1900. Oh, this amber thing. I don't know if it's a bitters. Huh. Classic. Uh, Duffy's malt whiskey. 
usually have a patent date on bottom. Uh, August 1886. That's a beautiful honey amber color. It's got a lot going on. I like the monogram. Those things ready to fall out. Let's see here. What do we got going here? WB Manufacturing Company. Uh, no other embossing. Looks like some kind of machine made cold cream container. Oh, this one could be interesting. Let's see what we got going on here. This is wild. So it's machine made. Okay. Barrett and Companies. Yet Virginia Dare. Norfolk, Virginia. It's a wine bottle. These may have been used during Prohibition. You can see there's just all kinds of writing going on there. A newer piece in comparison to what I usually dig. Oh. <laughs> that was full of groundwater. Looks like a turn mold wine. Yeah, it could have been used for cooking uh, in a different color than they usually are. This has a partial label. Looks like it could be uh, some kind of apothecary piece, some kind of pharmaceutical bottle. It's a tooled top. I'd put this one at about 1905. That's cool. A little uh, brass, maybe dinner bell of some sort. Looks like uh, some pieces are missing though. We're down almost six feet in the ground and we finally got into a use layer. We had some undigested seeds and you can see there's some pieces sticking out here. Looks like a tooled top, uh, reinforced lip, a pharmaceutical bottle made by the Whittle Tatum company. Huh, some kind of medicine or extract. E.W. Gillette and Company, LTD, Chicago, Illinois. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. It's one of these with the uh, owl and the moon on it. It's a Gillette extract bottle. Oh, and another one. Let's see. Some kind of a perfume. That's a tooled top. These are always a uh, really heavy glass. like a beer bottle, a tooled top, made by William Franzen and Son of Milwaukee. This, let's see, that's really nice. Wow, that's some kind of English transfer ware. Looks like a cathedral is on it. It's got some iron leaves as well. Sometimes these have markings. All I see is Abbey on it. It's a looks like a double stamp, so it's hard to read. What kind of canning jar filled with groundwater, I hope. Uh, Swayze's improved mason. It uh, doesn't have a ground lip. I'd put this at about 1905. Well, what's going on with this? J.R. Watkins. J.R. Watkins Medical Company, Winona, Minnesota. This was likely some kind of ointment. It's a machine-made threaded top piece. Now, let's see this. Oh, that's nice as well. We've got a Flow Blue, I believe they call this. Sometimes, yeah, oh, there's a maker's mark. Uh, Monmouth Semi-Porcelain, New Wharf Pottery, England. There's a CP on that, must be the potter's initials. And then if you see on the rim here, they call it Flow Blue because when the pattern was transferred on, the color ran off, appearing that it's flowing off of it. Uh, 
this is an older style. It's a Blake style prescription bottle. Uh, it's a light aqua color. Uh, could be pre-1900 on this one. Another prescription bottle. This one's got a rounded lip. It's a, again, circa 1905 tooled top. Now this thing, let's see. Wow, oh, that's a big one. It's a pickled goods container. Got some markings, Heinz. Heinz number 16, patented April, April 4th, 1882. So that's just the patent now. I'm sure they use that style for many years later, but it is a tooled top. This use layer is packed. I don't even know where to start. I guess on the edge over here, looks like some kind of a beer. It's a tooled crown top made by the Streeter Bottle and Glass Company. That's Streeter, Illinois. Oh, wow. Well, an Olympia flask that patented in 1898. It has an 1898 patent on bottom. All kinds of ceramic dinnerware pieces, an insane amount. This is a yeah, it's circa 1900 piece, typical floral pattern. That looks like a Blake style prescription bottle. Uh, it's got a mark on the bottom, but it's faded. That's early, I'd put this at 1900, maybe a bit earlier. Okay. Yeah, Souter's Elegant Flavoring Extracts. Royal Remedy and Extract Company, Dayton, Ohio. That's a tooled top. These ones are cool to find. They have a lot going on, a lot of embossing. Huh. We got some groundwater coming out of that one. And Look at that, two uh, intact cups. These have the horseshoe on bottom. Uh, that was a really uh, classic pattern back in the day. These may have actually started out as jelly tumblers or uh, may have held cottage cheese and they turned them into drinking glasses later on. This one's, <laughs> well, we got, yeah, look at that. A little uh, bisque porcelain doll head. This one's uh, likely German made. Most of them were made in Germany during that time period. Oh, this pit's just loaded. Oh, okay, some kind of a pickled goods preserve container filled with groundwater, mud. <laughs> No embossing though, likely held out some kind of capers, pickles, something along those lines. And another. Yeah, no embossing on this one either. Broken lamp chimney. That's wild. That's a chamber pot lid. Looks like it has some kind of a sponge pattern on it or something. Uh, these usually don't have any markings on the lids, but the bases do. Hopefully we'll find the base down here somewhere. Oh wow, another little uh, jelly tumbler. This one has a 
a gold pattern on it that could actually be 24 karat gold leaf that was common in manufacturing during the day. The things we get ourselves into, I'm almost 10 feet down. Note the ground around here is incredibly stable. There wasn't even bracing when this pit was originally open. But I've still been pulling pieces up. I've got a ton down here. A solid use layer. Awesome. Look at that. This looks mint. It's a mason's patent jar. A ground lip patented November 30th, 1858. This is late 1800s. It's like a prescription bottle. No embossing. Rounded lip circa 1905. I've got a couple here. Uh, Sheldon. Sheldon style. Prescription bottle circa 1905. And another prescription bottle made by the Western Bottle Manufacturing Company it has WBM Company embossed on bottom. Another prescription bottle. Uh, Philadelphia oval style, getting earlier, has an H embossed on bottom, still has some contents inside. Looks like an ironstone china coffee cup, has a little design to it on the bottom. Uh, again, turn of the century, circa 1900. And another one has a little different style. This one you can see the handle's broken off. That's likely why they discarded it. An extract bottle. It's got a tooled top. No other embossing on it. It's a ball neck panel style. Another prescription bottle. It's a Sheldon style. Again, circa 1905. All right. The Mason's patent jar with the hero cross. I can see the top was chipped. That's likely why this one was discarded. It couldn't seal anymore. Wow, that's a big comb. It's uh, one of those early unbreakable things. Uh, some kind of early rubber, I suppose, maybe related to Goodyear, the Goodyear company. A possible jelly tumblers here. Found a lot of kitchen related items. Yeah, this is another one of those with the uh, horseshoe on the bottom. Again, it would have held some kind of jelly, jam, cottage cheese. Okay. Oh, wow. It's a broken mason jar, but that's a ball mason's patent. You'll see that 1858. That's not the year it was made. That's just the patent date. This is likely from the 1880s or 90s. I think this might be an old cap gun. Uh, I know back in the day the cap guns were made to resemble real guns. It could actually be a real one. It's so rusted. Uh, see the barrel chamber right there. All kinds of metal stuff. 
I think this is a cast iron uh, safe bank. It was a piggy bank made to look like a safe. I've dug a few of these over the years, so I'm fairly certain that's what it is. Some more metal. Uh, I'm guessing all this was dropped down around the same time. Just a chain of some sort. I don't know, if used to chain up a dog or something, who knows. We're down almost 12 feet. It's actually getting a little dark down here. We're a couple feet off the bottom. There's a, another layer here. Uh, looks like a few bottles. Some kind of a toiletry, I think. What's going on with this? Dr. Elgraves? Unequaled tooth powder, Chicago. That's a tooled top. I'd never seen one of these before. Sketchy being down here. The ground is uh, hard packed though. Looks like we have a pickle bottle, preserve bottle of some sort, capers or pickles in it. And maybe the lip of a prescription drugstore bottle. Let's see. All right, a prescription bottle, Sheldon style. A Sheldon style prescription, uh, no drugstore uh, embossed in the glass. Finding just tons of little uh, dinnerware pieces. This is wild. Look at that. That's a little teacup. I don't know if it was some kind of novelty tea set or maybe a child's tea set. It looks like a hand painted flower on it though. see uh, all these undigested seeds. This is definitely an old outhouse pit. Let's see. Some kind of an extract. <laughs> JBL flavoring extracts. Logansport, Indiana. I'd never seen one of these either. That uh, looks like a tooled top of uh, ball neck panel style. Uh, a bunch of broken windows in this layer too. This one's kind of wedged in there. Wedged in with all the broken windows, I guess. Oh, okay. That's a, an applied crown top beer bottle. It's a turn mold, so this is one of the earlier crown tops. Most folks know them as pry-off caps. This is, a, I'd say, right around 1900, 1905. like a, another prescription bottle, nothing home. Uh, I think we have a glass company on bottom made by the Western Bottle Manufacturing Company. They made a lot of these back in the day. All right. Looks like a cologne bottle of some sort. It has a, what does it have on the bottom here? Oh, W.T. and Company. So it was made by the Whittle Tatum Glass Company. And uh, it would have had a paper label and then that metal stopper that's clearly corroded. Oh, and another tooth powder. So uh, I don't know if this was the equivalent of toothpaste or something to prevent decay. Uh, it's good age though. Yeah, that same 1900, 1905 range. This is one of the deepest pits I've been in. This is insane. I've got uh, a few more bottles. I did find bottom. <sighs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, right on. Thought these were mason jar lids, but uh, it looks like it's the top and bottom to a cosmetic container, a matching set. Looks like some kind of, oh, PD and Company. So this is a pharmaceutical bottle. 
from Park Davis and Company. They had a wide range of pharmaceutical products around the turn of the century. A big ink bottle. Okay, from the Diamond Ink Company. That was another uh, major distributor during its time. And a lamp chimney. Looks like a machine made lamp chimney circa 1900. This pit's done. It's all finished up. This was something else. Got a good variety of pieces. Everything dated from about 1900 up to the World War I era. Got a above average amount of dinnerware, ornate dinnerware actually. Got some toiletry containers, some extracts, cold creams. Uh, below average amount of beers, wines, and liquor bottles. It seems the family wasn't consuming much alcohol. Got that lamp chimney, some uh, pickled goods containers, and a bunch of canning jars. I'd say an above average amount of those. Also got some prescription bottles, pharmaceutical bottles, some jelly jars. Well, there you have it. We'll get this thing filled back in.